All right, welcome back to the Good Morning Ninja show. And uh, I believe, say, if you don't deal with us, you can also say we just finished our new super review and our top story segment earlier. And uh, for those of you now, we, con we contribute on the show. We say we thank you and I appreciate you every time as you are doing this. Well, uh, we're moving on to the next segment. And this is, uh, I, I promised you a conversation that's very, very, very insightful. Uh, for those of us, we would like to get involved in spoken words. You know, you like to be a poet. I want to be talking to someone very exceptional in the industry, and uh, his name is Sami Sage Hassan. He is a, uh, a writer, a poet, a life coach, and uh, he has a lot of other great accolades on his belt. Welcome, sir. Morning. Good morning. How's everything? You know you know <laughs> yes. So, uh, as we always do on the show, we ask you genuinely, how are you? We want to know, because we know we're in a pandemic. We always like to ask, how are you? Now, oh, wow. Is it English I'm going to speak or pigeon? Anyone, as they go. <laughs> I didn't tell you where, this pandemic, na emotion pandemic, hmm. this year, when they catch a person sometimes, you go do, let's like, say, they cough, you go do, let's like, say, you get some issues, but um, we have had a good time chilling at home, Recalibrating our life and rethinking our thinking need me. Mm. So so far so good. The I am good. I am grateful, and I'm looking forward to a brighter future. Mm. So as it is, do you do you do you think that this would be the new normal, or are we? Do you think we are going to ever go back to the way it was before? Amen. No, we need to get back to as close as possible. I, I believe in evolving culture because culture is a living, breathing aspect of living. Culture is not dead. So I know that we are going to be improving our culture. So I think that this is an opportunity to re, let me borrow the same word, recalibrate our cultural understanding of life and then maybe ingeniously create a new way to interact, to socialize. But mm. we will never stop being social beings. It's not possible though. Mm. Okay, all right. Thank you for that uh, one or two cents. And because we, we always like to ask, you know, as, the, as people, they, they, they really, you know, take this whole situation. So maybe we even talk yes, about please. spoken words as it is. Let's talk about spoken words. And uh, seeing that you've been doing this for quite some time, uh, yeah. it, is, it, is, it, is, it has become a part of you. So we're looking at spoken word as a career, you know, because a lot of times some people feel, say, okay, uh, I know how to put words together. Can I get into, can I make spoken word a career? Or I like to listen to people speak. Is that, you know, the way I can get into this career and be lucrative at it? So let's we want to have the conversation from a, from someone who has been in this uh, industry and has been uh, professional and has been uh, you know um, harnessing the industry how has it been for you and how do you think someone can actually get involved in this spoken word is a is a hill you know is a difficult hill to climb it is not the easiest um, art form is not the easiest career to, to decide to follow. So you're gonna have to have a heart. You're going to, going to have to have a passion. Why did I come into spoken word? It was because I knew without a doubt that I would not be fulfilled if I failed to take that leap. And that's why I jumped in. I hmm. came in deciding that it wouldn't matter the outcome. It wouldn't matter the hunger, the suffering, the distrust, the abuse that will come. I was going to face it and do it. So first of all, you, you have to be like a Spartan. You have to decide that you're a warrior with words. Your weapons, your bullets are words, and you're going to do this because you understand who you are. So spoken word is not the easiest art form, it's not the easiest thing to pursue. But I'm going to tell you this, in the last 15 or 20 years, it has grown tremendously. It has become more economically viable, more financially rewarding. It has not gotten to the state or the stage where I would have really preferred, but we're getting there. And one thing I realized about spoken word is spoken word for every poet, spoken word should be one outlet. You're supposed to have a hand of five fingers. 
spoken word is going to just be one outlet. You can write a book or books. You can make CD or CDs. You can try to do stage plays where the dialogue is in, is in rhyme or is lyrical and poetry. There's so much other stuff you can do. You can even be an actor. I know so many poets in America who are acting in films. You know, you can be a public speaker. So there's so much more you can do with poetry. You have to consider spoken word as the foundation, as the fist. But then when you open up your hand, the five fingers shoot out. And then you can have like five multiple streams of income or multiple expressions of your art connected to one hand. Hmm. That's my advice for the people who want to do spoken word at this point in time. But then, yes, you're going to have to, you know, have a love for the artistic, artistic expression, relay of thought. You want to say something, but you want to say it beautifully. You know, that's just, I think, is fundamental and foundational with this thing we would do for you. Hmm. So um, you would say, um, for you who has, you've been in this for, a, a, for quite some time, how does it come yeah. for you? Uh, when you want to write or, you know, put up a, a, a poem, how, how, do you, how do you get your inspiration? Is it that, you, is it always personal experiences? Is it uh, situations around you? How does it work for you? See, I'm an abstract poet. I'm a, I'm a, I am an abstract poet. My poems are quite abstract quite a lot. And um, for abstraction, what drives you is philosophy. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. What drives you is philosophy. You know, it is the ethos. It is the principles. It is the understanding of culture, of society, of spirituality, of existence that is running your OS that now makes you, that comes out in this artistic form. So for me, how do I do the poetry? Sometimes I'm just sitting down and then my mind, my mind will go through a whirlwind of emotion. It just be rattling, rumbling. Sometimes it is sad, sometimes it is angry, sometimes it is happy, sometimes it is sexual, sometimes it is spiritual. And then a word will pop up. One word or two words or phrase will pop up. And when that happens, you know that a poem is calling your name. And mm. you start to ask that. And it's like, it's, like, it's like you're pulling water from a well, you know? You, you hold to the rope, and then you're pulling, and you're pulling, and the words are coming, and they're coming, and finally, the bucket comes out, and your hand is a bucket of water, and that's the poem that you now pour for the rest of the people to enjoy. So, so that's for me. That's for you, okay. And uh, it's worked for you so far, looking at how far you have come in the industry. No, the other way. The other way, make I tell you the other way. Uh -huh. <laughs> the other way, be saying, eh? When company or brand call me, say write one poem between now and tomorrow. Uh -huh. I could give you money. I they tell you true. You know you don't go believe I'm a poem just go, just come out like it's pam. So so sometimes one inspiration. Day, I they, I they tell you money. <laughs> one day like this, I was doing something for Zane or one of those companies years ago. Mm -hmm. I write the poem for the event. They say come and do poem. Now for day I write the poem. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Ali Baba was the MC. He was saying, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the sage. I said, they give me five minutes, I never finish. Nadia, I write up. Nadia, I do up. At the time, he say, sometimes, money get the way you get to inspire a person. <laughs> so all that, I want to talk about abstract philosophy. That one, I put decide. The other one, I want you to pay a person something. Nah, so, <laughs> so um, seeing that uh, you, you, you have that, like you, you, you made an illustration of a well, so which means say yes. that, that well supposed to get a lot of water where you feel draw from Nabi. Now, so the, the reason why I made that, uh, I'm referring to that now, say as someone who uh, writes poems, you need, is it compulsory or a must that you must know some kind big, big grammar or words? All those, must you research but, meaning and, you know, all those kind of things to feel they draw from this well of words where you go get? Must, Waiting, waiting, they destroy poetry. Now, big, big words. Waiting, they promote pop music. Now, simple, simple words. Now, communication and understanding. Yes. Forget the big words. Poetry is not in words. Poetry is in emotion. Let me tell you something. 
one day I was rehearsing my poetry in the house, in the room. I had a show, I was very loud. And I had a deaf and dumb neighbor who happened to come into the house at that time. So I left him in the sitting room and I went to the bedroom to be rehearsing. As I was just rehearsing very loudly, I didn't expect him to hear. This deaf guy ran into the room, was just jumping and shouting and looking at me. I said, oh, oh, oh. I said, oh, oh, oh. I didn't understand. Hmm. Then we had phones then, so he, he typed for me that, am I rapping? I said, how would you know? He said, you could hear the vibration of the sound on the wall. And the way the thing was hitting the wall, it was musical enough to excite him in the sitting room. I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. That he couldn't hear anything, but he felt the energy. And that is what the poem is. Don't worry about big words. Be bothered about energy, my brother. Find the energy. Bring them, come out. Release them. People will not remember what you said 10 years from now, but people will remember how you made them feel 50 years from now. They will mm. remember that when I meet that guy, and I saw a feel. What did he talk? Honestly, I don't remember, but I know how he made me feel. So it's about the energy, it's about the emotion, it's about the feeling. Mm. Because uh, the reason why I asked that one, because see, a lot of uh, young poets, they come out, and sometimes uh, they refuse, say, the, the, uh, the poets we don't did there before them, they expect them to come in with big, big grammar, to show, say, you did intelligent. You understand? If you want, oh. if you want, if you want to make sentence, if you don't put one big word inside, you know, she'll say you don't do your research well. But as you they talk this one, so say uh, now the big grammar they kill poetry. Uh, That's I what believe, kills it. I believe say hey, now it is it's 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 new to to some people now. They go look and like say ah, but not be waiting our teachers they, they expect read, from us. If they read Maya Angelou, a very simple poem, very simple thing she writes. You know the thing about communication and poetry is you need to take into cognizance the society where you did, the environment where you did, which kind language then they talk, mm -hmm. what is their everyday conversation. Mm -hmm. If poetry cannot become everyday conversation, poetry will remain in the ivory tower of universities and in the minds and books of professors. How many professors did for this world? And how many professors say they listen to poetry? How many students did for English department? Where they fail every time? How many? You know, I want this poetry to reach the mechanic. Make I tell you another story. When I do something for one TV station, very simple thing. One day, I, when I did work for speed, one mechanic was shouting at me. He was saying, hip, hop, hip, hop. I said, what is wrong with this mechanic? <laughs> another time. Another person from across the road, they shout to my name. They shout, hey, I'm waiting. Mm. Then I realize that the simplest poem when I do, the very simplest, Nahin be the most popular. Nahin where people take know me with up till today. I don't believe I'm that poem, they embarrass me. They embarrass me, <laughs> but him, people remember. And that poem is 14 or 15 years now. But when people see me, they say, I remember when I saw you do, and they go mention that one. Mm -hmm. I have two poetry albums. I have a book. I have hundreds of poems. I have done hundreds of brand poems for organizations in the last 15 uh, years. But the one that everybody remembers, the one that everybody remembers, is the one that is paved by, as if they play like small people. Mm -hmm. So as, as for, uh, from the gathering from waiting you talk now, simplicity now be the main thing when it comes to uh, writing poems. Make them you as easy it. as possible so that people go feel yeah. relate. Yes. Hmm. You know, if you have that time, you go feel them. Don't be big word, be poetry. Now feeling be poetry. How you take those small words where you get, how you take, put them together, you know, mix them, mix them, mix them. Now like, you know, cooking food for hours, you know, get plenty of ingredients, but what do you get now in the work? Hmm. You know, you can't, Cook Chinese without a Chinese, some you even you they cook a goosey, you know, as you go take one. You have to do the thing that is relevant to the people. That's why I think that the next level of poetry in Nigeria might be pigeon. You nice. know, pigeon really, really take it to another level. Nice. It will take it to another level. Uh, we, we believe so too. Now, let's even talk about poetry in Nigeria as, as, as a career and how lucrative it is uh, so far. We know, say, a lot of times, uh, some it's, it hasn't been 
so popularly or generally accepted yet yes. we still see them as things for the for the intellectual set of people the people uh -huh. we we know as they go the elites now they listen to poem so uh -huh. how has it been or what you feel say be the disconnect where they happen now the reason why poetry they were a day for nigeria what you feel say be the disconnect you know real art real art cannot survive outside of patronage and in europe back in the day in the during the renaissance poets and artists had patrons in kings in monarchs in popes in bishops that's how poets and artists have been designed to survive because there is a correlation between poetry art and the civilization of a people so the authority, the people who have the financial wherewithal, the people who have the moral wherewithal, the people who have the political power, have a responsibility to uphold and patronize poets. So in my understanding, what I think poetry needs to have in Nigeria is government, I'm sorry, I'm gonna to have to say that, is government needs to come in. And then secondly, banks and institutions need to come in. It should be corporate, social responsibility let me tell you something you can judge the future you can judge the civilization of the people by listening to the poets that they hear and it's very odd but poetry is a distillation of the emotion of your culture so when you hear the poets you can tell the kind of people these people are going to be 100 years from now that's why it's a visionary, is a futuristic art form that institutions that are benefiting economically from need to jump in. My dream is I wish every single bank, I wish every single corporation will adopt a particular poetry event, a particular poetry format, and sponsor it with tachere money. Tachere money. Mm. If you gather these boys, 10 million, 20 million, 5 million, if you if all of them they draw, this thing will work fantastic. They, the way they built the music industry, because let me tell you, the corporate sector, the corporate sector built Nigerian music industry. Yeah. The way they built the music industry, they will build not just the poetry or the literary, they will build the future of this country. It will change how we think. It will change how we feel. It will change what we create, the societies that we build. Poetry will mathematically align our understanding of life and change how we bring up our children. Make I tell you the truth, but people never know that part yet. Hmm. Hmm. It's, 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 it's interesting. So as it stands now, you believe that the government has a part to play in uh, making sure that uh, poetry becomes a lucrative industry. And the corporate industry. sector. And, and the private sector also. Money. And the people with money. A hmm. man with money can just, you know what, how much can I do this when I approach? 100,000 every month. Okay, I will give you 100,000 every month. How can I organize this poetry event? How many people they come? 30 people, no problem. Take this 100,000. This is my responsibility to art, to society. This is where I'm contributing. As they give money for motherless baby, no be with motherless baby. As they give money for, you know, to help society, you know, give this money. Find a way to make it tax deductible. If the government they involved, they're gonna say, okay, this thing can be made tax deductible so people can support art form. This is what makes society art, culture, technology, relationship, society. That's what it is. Mm. I, 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 I like the fact that you mentioned the music industry on how yes. uh, on how the, the, the private sector and the, gov uh, the government being helped the music private, industry yes. grow. They built it. Okay. So, um, uh, speaking about the music industry, there was a time in uh, in, in Nigeria where uh, it was it was rap music or it was uh, the foreign music that was in vogue. Yeah, yeah. Foreign songs were in vogue, but yeah. there was the, 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 there was a turnaround that uh, you know that was like about 10, 12 years years ago. Then there was a turnaround that uh, that uh, now influenced the artists to start creating songs that could be you know grass rootedly accepted you understand yeah. so i believe that there was a turnaround from the production style of music now i'm yeah. say, I'm, I'm heading with somewhere with this uh, question saying that don't you think that there's also a turnaround that needs to be done in the kind of poems that our poets put out maybe like like the one you said 
you did one uh, poem that was very basic, and that is yeah. one of your most popular poems till now. You it understand? Is the most it was the, it's the most popular poem till now, yeah. and yes. that was because you took it to the basic level, the grassroots. Well, People could relate with it. So don't you think that as uh, you, you can, uh, the poets out there need to also have, a, you know, an intentional turnaround to the style of their poems. Maybe make it more generally or grassrootedly relatable so that people on the streets can actually be reciting your poems as, you know, as yeah. they walk on the streets. Which is why I know the judge um, poet, po poet. When I see poet, they, they do poetry and they get age factor. I'm in my house. Then someone say, ah, you can't say house. I say, no, please let him say house. Because the person on the street will hear house and you will connect to it. Exactly. When I ask the FIFO, I say, no, you can't say FIFO. I say, no, please let him say FIFO. Because there are certain people who are going to recognize him. They want to say, well, another one going to do poetry, say, ah, you know, that's what they do. I'm not so they do. Let him say, that's what they do. We need to, like I said, make it relatable. Like you just said as well, we hmm. have to make our poetry relatable. We have to make it so simple that everybody on the street can say it. And then we do not discount. We do not discount or remove the intellectual one. That True. one's still there. Yeah. That one. But some of us need to come to the streets and do it on the road. You know, what to do it for... Uh, let me give you some example. When I was doing poetry, there was a time that I was made to do poetry in a nightclub. My friend loves poetry, go on the nightclub, invited me over. In the middle of the club, he stopped the music. and he said, do poetry. Yes, he said, do poetry. I say, Oga, go inside this buttercup. With these people, with these evil people, when I see, he mm. said, do the poetry. So I said, let them play one music. So they played a music that they knew. It was Mobonda Veli Veli. That was also, you know, that, that, was that playing music. playing then, yeah. Mm -hmm. it didn't, uh -huh. Then I did a, a naughty poem that was, um, what's the word? That was... The kind of that was similar to the lyrics of the songs that they hear generally speaking. Mm. And those people actually stopped and paid attention and and applauded. And after the the, the club, the meet I said, ah man, that was a good one. That was a good one. I didn't believe it. So I realized that all we have to do with poetry is take it to where the people are. It, I took it to a nightclub. I've taken it to the most incredible places. There's no kind of place I haven't taken poetry to. Mm. I've been booed. I have done poetry at the larger stages. I've been booed. Ooh, yeah, baby, baby. Come on, everything this one they do. I've gotten that one, no doubt. Mm -hmm. But I've gotten the most incredible applauses. The most incredible applauses. When in, in Hip Hop World Awards 2006, the applause that they gave spoken word poetry that I rendered was the largest and the biggest applause of the night. Mm. It's on record, the largest and the biggest applause of the night. Why? I took that poem to them. I did a poem about music and musicians, and those musicians were there, and they could hear their name, and they could hear the sound of the, the, the names of their songs, and they could recognize themselves in it, and they were screaming and shouting and clapping. Yeah, look, that's me, that's me. After the show, I would get hugs, they hugged me, and that's the day that this spoken word poetry was born, because suddenly everybody in that sphere knew yeah. about it. Everybody wanted something like that. Mm. I, that's, that's what I think we need to do. Amazing. Amazing. So far, it's been a very, very uh, uh, insightful conversation, at least from what you've said uh, for growing uh, poets. They can take one or two th uh, things from this conversation, knowing that uh, you, we, we, you, we want to make this industry evolve, then it has to start yeah. with the poets themselves, knowing that we, have, we, we still maintain the intellectual poems, but also yes. see how you can get to connect with the grassroots as well. That way, yeah. You know, as they talk, um, now people with their streets, now they usually they even, you know, exactly. patronize your markets. Okay, so exactly. before you leave us, you said something earlier that uh, there was a time you had to do a poem on the spot, and you know, you were able to write something out to make it work. So maybe we try uh, ask for your permission <laughs> to give us something very light uh, for the Good Morning Ninja show on Wazobia Max TV. You feel do something make, for us? And make I read for you. Make, make I read. Oh, yeah, nah. no wahala. I don't hold now. Nah, no wahala, please. It go do okay. <laughs> hold on, no. All you right. Uh, we deal with you. We deal with you. We are with you. Uh, we are waiting for you when you're ready, sir. <laughs> Anytime you're ready, just let us know. So I'm not a poet, I'm a revolution. When you look at me, what do you see? A what slinger or a soldier with a derringer? 
Do you see your body or the wimp with a scraggy notebook, pen stuck behind the ear, peering through cloudy glasses at figures scratched on white sheets turned brown from stained fingers thumping through them? When you look at me, what do you see? Do you see a poet? Or do you peer into the steely stare of a revolution? I am not a poet, I am a revolution. I ride waves like a kid on rollerblades, navigating a sea of humanity in turmoil, tossed and turned by the turning of emotions, buried in the collage of water minds, higher society, of religion, and dead philosophy. When you look at me, what do you see? Do you see a word slinger or soldier with a derringer singing words of freedom, tingling with thoughts of fire, burning like oil on a body of water, flamed by gaseous air? When you look at me, what do you see? Do you see a poet or a revolution? I am not a poet. I am a revolution. I'm the change you seek in the wrong places. I'm the love you find in all the wrong places. I'm the truth that's hidden in all the same wrong places. I see faces with traces of tears worn by mine, torn apart, haggard. I am not a poet, I'm a revolution in ragged bofty. Brows creased in furrowed anger, heads wrapped in yellow bandana, military fatigues, shave Guevara t-shirt, leather jacket, and dance shoes because I will waltz to the music of the words composed in this poem. And this poem is yet not a poem. It's a revolution, it's change, it's growth, it's war, it's a new beginning, it's life, it's death, it's resurrection. I am not a poet, I am not a poet, I am not a poet, I am. <laughs> wow. Wow, amazing, amazing. I would, I was just blown away by the conversation as it was progressing. And I was, I was hoping that it would go on and on and on and on, but it's, it's, it's very, very nice. That was, that was very exceptional. I thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Sasami, for being with us on the show today. We appreciate uh, your time, and uh, we thank you for coming to give us uh, your two cents on how uh, spoken words can become a career and how people can get involved and how they can make the best of it. Uh, we appreciate uh, your time, and we say thank you very much uh, for joining us on Good Morning Ninja Show. To enjoy more of these our Ogunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.